Welcome to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. I'm your host, Sadia, and this is my mother, Ima. Hey, Ima. Hello. How are you doing, my sweetness? I'm doing good, thank God. Uh, the show. Yeah, so this week's topic, we're going to be discussing another part of Baltimore history. Um, if anybody is bored, they could easily Wikipedia this, but uh, in the Baltimore Jewish history, there is a, a, a rift between the high class society Jews and the low class society Jews. Uh, it was mainly the, the Russian Jews were low class and the German Jews were high class. And it was pretty intense to at one point, um, if, a Jew, if a German Jew married a Russian Jew, they would even sit Shiva for them. Uh, heard about that. My mother told, yeah, my mother told me about that, yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's why mm -hmm. we're going to discuss this with you, because you've experienced <laughs> this growing up in, 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 as a, as a more, more of a Russian-based Jew in the 1950s and 60s, um, and, and how that affected you and, and what you went through um, and what anybody else did. And, and, and Tati was more, more German Jew, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was it, his uh, family was like a combination of uh, Austrian, Austrian German. And also, I think his mother's side, though, was Ukraine. I think his mother's side was, was Russian, if I'm not mistaken. Right, but maybe Ukraine, maybe Hungarian. I don't know. I but I, I know that. It was Ukraine. Well, because I, I know I'm named after my a great uncle named Sadia Itzikov mm -hmm. from, I think, from, from Primishlan. Which... Prim Primishan is it's like it's it was like um like a in, on the board I think it was between like Germany Austria Russia it was like uh, around that like between that area. Well, yeah, that's well, that's what I'm talking about. I think that's from yeah. my, from uh, his his mm -hmm. mother's side, my grandmother's side. Mm -hmm. Um, but tell me about 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 your experience, and then and if there was more of like a gradual shift where I don't see that anymore. To be honest, I really don't see that kind of elitism um, nowadays. No, you're right. There, there isn't. I remember. Um, it's so funny how you you jolted my memory a little bit. That there was a boy in my eighth grade class who um, was his background was uh, his grandparents. I think were from parents or grandparents were from Germany, and um, he. Um, uh, his grandparents had, you know, were able to leave Germany before the Holocaust started. And he made a nasty comment to me one time that, um, and, well, this kid had a lot of problems anyway. I feel sorry for him. I don't know where he is now. Maybe he's a drug addict. I don't know. But Maybe he got he, better. Yeah. <laughs> In his cruelty? Could be. Nah, I mean, whatever. Let's think, <laughs> let's think positive thoughts here. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's send some positive vibes. Yeah. So he said to me one time, it was really nasty. He said um, that... Um, he said that the reason I lost um, so many of my cousins in the Holocaust was because his grandparents had the good sense to get out in time. Well, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that's kind of true. But yes and no, because there were, it also depended upon money and connections and things like that, because mm. there were people who, if you were able to make the right connections that, you know, that facilitated a lot of times you, um, you know, getting getting out. You know, there were people that tried desperately to get passports and to try to get out. And um, what can I say? It's you know, it's, you know, uh, you know. What can we say? Only only God knows why. And maybe maybe one day it'll become clear to us why. I don't think it should come clear. I think uh, we should accept yeah. it as something that like it's part of Jewish history. It's but it's something that you yeah. should kind of just move on from. It, not yeah. not like it. The, the problem with trying to decipher something as evil as that is that mm -hmm. you then give legitimacy to that evil. Mm, good point. I think you're right. So I, okay. I, I just, whatever. But, but you were talking, we we're talking about like jealousy between like Jewish classes. Um, I, um, what can I, say? I noticed well, in my day, uh, for some reason, and in my parents' generation, there was a lot of jealousy. We were talking about this before the program that um, I was talking, I mentioned something about the writer. I think the man's name was Philip, Philip Roth was his name. He wrote two of his books that he wrote became famous movies. One was called Port Noise Complaint. The other one was called Goodbye Columbus. 
And both of these books and eventually the movies dealt with, it was, they were non-religious, assimilated, you might say, um, Jewish people who were from humble backgrounds, you might say, trying to compete, trying to get into the higher classes. Goodbye Compass especially dealt with this theme. Uh, the book was about a, a poor Jewish boy who is dating a very wealthy, spoiled, upper-class Jewish girl. And every time he calls her or goes out on a date, his mother makes a comment about, hmm, fancy, fancy. And um, I, guess, I remember my, par my parents making comments about um, people who were wealthier or more successful than they are. And there was, I, don't know what, I think what it was, I don't know how to explain it, but I think you had, on you know, the history of Jewish immigration, you had Jews that came here and made it and were successful. And then you had what was called the poor cousins, other immigrants that came over a little later who were struggling. And so there was a lot of, I hate to say it was really sad, there was a lot of class envy. I noticed something interesting though, um, by the fact that um, we be, that your father and I became from, and we sent you children to from Jewish schools. And I find what's very interesting in the from community, I, I don't see that kind of, how can I say it? Not exactly jealousy, but I don't see that kind of riff as, so, as pronounced so much. I mean, my children, yeah, true, we didn't have a lot of money, but they had friends that Kenina Har lived in really gorgeous houses and um, were, whose parents were very, very wealthy. And they, they got along, they, they were best friends. And um, I got along with their parents and everything. And nobody, you know, nobody made any comments. Nobody even, even broached the subject of somebody being richer than I was like, I was like, okay, you know, well, you know, so what, you know, it's like, it was, I don't know, I think, I found that among the from community that people are more accepting of each other. There was less of this competition. Um, on, on that level, I would say yes. Um, I mean, there's, there's always going to be different levels and different reasonings. I, I, I definitely, when it comes to high class, low class, from what our, our main topic is today, I would say that, that I definitely didn't really experience a lot of feeling like I was beneath anybody because, you know, my parents couldn't afford anything. I didn't feel inadequate, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's also, I think has to do with the, the progression of society, um, of the, the, the ideal way of viewing society, whereas we're all equal, you know, we're all in this together, we're all in this world together and to treat each other with respect. Um, and I think that's something that we are definitely moving forward towards. And I, th I think it was that it was the revolution of the sixties that kind of I think broke it. Um, at least from, from my perspective, I feel, because there is definitely mm -hmm. this, this, this push. There is, this, there was a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of tension that was going on um, with, between your, your parents and, and I know you were telling me stories when we were growing up about how when you were, you couldn't afford um, a lot, your parents couldn't afford, and you had friends that could, you couldn't afford a lot. I remember you going to a birthday, uh, having a birthday party, either you were having a birthday party or they were having a birthday yeah. party. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 oh, the girl that came with the, the little plastic piggy bank full of um, pennies. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, there was a girl. Um, I went to the public school and, um, you know, we had kids from all walks of life. The public schools in those days were very good. You had, you had some pretty wealthy kids that went to the public school. We had like all, all kinds of, you know, well, all, that there change, were all though? social strata. strata. Um, but when, when we get going to the story about the girl that before we go on, that um, it was really sad. This little girl and her mother lived in this little attic apartment and they had nothing. And, um, I invited her to my birthday party. It was at a bowling alley. I mean, my, my parents didn't have a lot of money, but you know something, compared to some other kids, believe me, I had plenty. 
Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I had plenty of opportunities and uh, thank God we lived, we, we lived a pretty decent life. We really did. Um, so it, I, there was a, a five and 10, in those days, the five and the five and 10 cents store was five cents and 10 cents. Today, the five and 10 is $5, $10. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, for 10 cents, you could get this cute little plastic piggy bank. So she bought one of these 10 cent plastic piggy banks and she filled it up with pennies. Must've been about a hundred pennies. And I knew she didn't have a lot. And so when she gave this to me as a present, I purposely made a big deal over it and told her how much I loved it. And it was so nice. I said, oh, this is so cute. I said, I like, and I told her how much I like, I've seen these piggy banks, but how much I like these piggy banks. Yeah, but uh, I have one also. I said, this is really nice. Yeah, because I, you know. Do you think, do you think maybe the news or the television maybe ha brought to light the, the humanity of everybody? Gosh, that's a very, very good, that's a really good question. Yeah, I think, I think television could probably, you know, probably do something like that. I mean, there've been a lot of programs about, you know, people like, you know, good people from like lower socioeconomic strata. Yeah, but I think, I think so. I think you've got to, you probably had to give the media some credit for that. I know a lot of people are down on the media, but the media can also be, you know, used for positive things. I also think a lot goes back to, um, I've noticed something interesting that when I was going to school, I mentioned this before, how the whole point of the public school at the time was that they wanted us to achieve. That was the thing, was competition and achieving. And there was very little attention that was paid to um, social development and to, how can I say it, like human communication between friends. It was mostly just, you know, get the information, spit it out and get a good grade on that test and get good grades and get into a good college. That was the whole emphasis. What I like about the from Jewish schools is that the emphasis of the from Jewish schools is on meetos, is on personality traits, being kind to one, one another, being a decent human being. And I, I like that. Well, that's what's so funny, by the way, is that I remember growing up and of all of this like woke energy happening right now of people seeing movies and cartoons and different things, the way people act and treat each other and how mean it is, how mean spirited it is and how people mm -hmm. should behave more nicely. I remember my rabbis growing up telling me the same things I'm being, I'm hearing right now about, you know, like, look at, look at, look at these movies, how they treat each other and they think it's okay. And they talk about, mm. you, know, you know, the pranks they pull on each other or the cruelty <laughs> they have towards each other or the names that are, that, mm -hmm. that, get, that get called. And mm -hmm. that's why I think of like today's society, we're all, everyone's very upset with the woke cancel culture. Cause you know, it, it rubs them the wrong way and it makes them feel uncomfortable. But uh, for me, it's more like I kind of grew up with that. Like, I, I don't think a lot of from people back in the day ever watched movies or TV shows because of the problems that people are realizing now what they were back then. Hmm. It's interesting you should say that. I was reading an article about that, and this woman was reminiscing, uh, this woman who grew up, I guess, during the 30s or something like that, said she remembers as a little girl that her parents would not permit her to listen to, it's called Baby Snooks, it was Fanny Bryce did this routine where she was this fresh mouth little brat and her parents would not let her listen to that uh, broadcast because they didn't want her picking up the the nastiness or the fresh you know the fresh nastiness of this little kid that fanny bryce was portraying well it's it's very important because it's like first off children are impressionable second off is that there's a lot of negativity um that surrounds the media because it gets the most attention. It doesn't last very long, but it gets the most attention. And that's the biggest frustration is that when you, when you focus on how negativity is trying, you're trying to get, a, you're trying to get negative attention. It's just, it's, it's not, people are going to get sick of it. People are going to get tired of it, but at the time it's going to be something that's going to be very appealing. And as a matter of fact, it's just in the news. I think recently, I think, I think today actually that, um, they were talking about how um, Facebook and all these other, you know, 
uh, like YouTube and things like that, they use these algorithms and they don't really necessarily do it on purpose. It's just kind of somehow is that way because they're just trying to get clicks. They're not trying to manipulate, manipulate. They're trying to get more likes and views, but it causes you to, to get, get yourself to be more outraged and be more upset because that gets you the most attention. Well, there's something I don't understand. Why, why are they referring to like what's going on now as you know, the, all these things are being canceled now because they might be offensive to some people. And we see like books like, you know, Dr. Seuss, some of his books are now not no longer being public. They decide they're not going to, they're no longer going to publish them because uh, it looks like that they uh, offend certain people. They call it the woke. What is the woke, word woke? Woke means that point? you're, you're awake. You have an enlightenment. It's another way of saying enlightenment. It just enlightenment doesn't, it sounds too old fashioned. But it's about being a, going on the pave of, of enlightenment where you realize what you thought was okay is not okay. And they have this idea of cancel culture by, can't, by, by removing anything that's negative. And it's part of it I agree with, part of it I don't. The only reason, and this is from what I talked about before, you know, mm -hmm. they cancel Pepe Le Pew. Mm hmm. Um, I don't even I don't even know who that is. So Pepe, Pepe Le Pew <laughs> uh, was a skunk who ignores people's uh, people's distaste for him, and he's very pushy and puts his advances on other female characters. And the whole joke of it is he's a skunk. He smells really bad, so girls don't want to be around him. But he pushes himself on them, and that's the joke. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's it's funny. But the, again, I put on I put on my you know from school hat on, and I think back to the days of my rabbis in like elementary school, and would my elementary rabbi be okay with that? And the answer is no, he wouldn't. It'd be very inappropriate, very not sneeze, very immodest thing to do. Mm -hmm. So the average person nowadays is being woke, so to speak, where they realize that it's it's inappropriate, it's not sneeze, and they think that they sh it should be removed from. The, the culture of society and it shouldn't be shown, especially to children. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that, you know, me being a conservative Republican, which is why I moved to Florida so I could live in freedom as a conservative Republican. How's your Medicaid? <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> so, but the, the, you know, I, what I feel about this is, you know, when you start to cancel stuff, you start to sense, you know, to censor and cancel you're we're we're attacking the first amendment and like i said the road to hell is paved with good intentions um this is going we're going to be going down a slippery slope where there's going to be no freedom of speech eventually i think there should be freedom of speech freedom of expression and if you dis if you disagree with something you have the right to express that disagreement you have the God-given right to turn off that channel. You have the God-given right not to buy those publications. And if you don't buy them, if you don't subscribe to them, and somebody else doesn't, somebody else doesn't, then that's sending the producers of the stuff a very clear message. But it shouldn't be mandated. It it's should be an mandated. individual choice. That's the whole point. It's not government. The government has nothing to do with this. These are private entities doing their own thing. Yeah, this but is look, Warner Brothers and Disney doing their own stuff, deciding on their own based on a popularity. It's 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 just because it's popular nowadays. That's the only that's the only reason why it's happening. And and the biggest thing I think of is this too shall pass. There's gonna be an end to this. There's gonna be an end. It's gonna eat itself up. It's going like it, this 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 whole idea of you you have to tap tiptoe and and walk on eggshells. It's got to get mm -hmm. to a point where people don't want to walk on eggshells anymore. Yeah. And people are, 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 are mm -hmm. going to get tired of walking on eggshells. But my point I'm trying to make is not about walking on eggshells. It's about being more modest. It's about walking, mm -hmm. being more righteous. It's about being more mm -hmm. careful about your, your, your neighbor who you've been ignoring this whole time. You know, that's really what it's, uh, what it's all about. So if you understand that it's not about being an abused relationship and you're walking on eggshells, no, it's, that's not what it is. This is about, you know, 
being more friendly towards your other, towards the person and giving them more credit and being more, you know, I would say I'm trying to find the right words, showing more camaraderie. Um, but, but the problem is, in many cases, they're going overboard and they're finding they're finding offense where there really is none. You know, right. you know what I mean? That's you know. where, and that's where it's 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 going to get to a point where eventually they're just going to eat they're just going to it's going to eat, eat eat itself up. Um, you know, and that's again that's where there's there's going to be a line that's going to have to be drawn, and there's going to people are but it's going to have to take the population. It's going to take the entire population to decide one thing or another, and it's going to have to take a, a, a united front. Right now, everything is divided. Right now, you have everything all split mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, I, I, I don't, I don't know how it's going to be done because if I did know how, then I'd be very, very successful, or I'd have some level of foresight that <laughs> like would be amazing, but. And you, and you would know, and you know what stock to buy. Because I would know what stock to buy. <laughs> I would know what stock to buy. But that's that's really how it is. And I think what what in my opinion, you know, based off of my from, you know, education and upbringing, it's the the next step towards bringing Mashiach. It's the next step to uniting the entire world and you know bringing a redemption of of peace where we're all learning that. We have to work with each other. We have to work with different types of people. And that doesn't mean we walk on eggshells. It means we love one another. And if we love one another, then we will respect one another. And that's a different perspective than this whole feeling of walking on eggshells. Well, it's think, funny, you, you said mentioned before about coming Mashiach. It says when, you know, when we come to the coming of Mashiach, that people will no longer be jealous of each other. And I found that like the other day, I was thinking about like, growing up and seeing these jealousies and Baruch Hashem, thank God, I won't, I won't have those jealousies. I've gone to, you know, I've, I've gone to people's homes who that, you know, are very palatial. And it's like, it's like, what a, you know, I look at it and say, wow, what a beautiful home, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, I'm glad they have, you know, and I did, you know something, I did not feel any jealousy. My, now my parents probably would have made a comment about hmm, hmm, you know, you know, look how fancy, da, 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 you know, type thing. But um, I, I just didn't feel like way. I was just, I just, I'm coming to the point where it's like, hey, you know, God gives everybody exactly what they need to do to serve their purpose on this earth and to do whatever job it is that God wants them to do or whatever purpose He wants them to serve. And there's no really, there's no really real reason for jealousy. Yeah, there never was. It's just you have an animalistic instinct to do it. And that's, again, brings us full circle to the original elitist, you know, situation that you had growing up with the higher class Jews and lower class Jews, which brings us to the end of our podcast. I want to thank our listeners. Thank you so much for listening. Please share, tell everybody about it, button to people's conversations, say, hey, did you hear about this podcast? It's called Jewish Boy Culture <laughs> Mother. You should check it out sometime. <laughs> It'll be good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sweetheart, you have a good job. This. All right, you too, Ima. Love you. All right, love you. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. Please like and share and find us on Facebook at Jewish Boy Calls His Mother Podcast. We are looking forward to hearing from you.